Hey there, are you suffering with knee pain at home right now? Are you looking for treatments you can do at home or home remedies for your knee problem? I'm going to cover with you today 19 of the best knee treatments and home remedies that you can find around. My name is Dr. David Midoff. I'm a manual physical therapist and I'm the owner of El Paso Manual Physical Therapy. We specialize in helping people get healthier, more active, and mobile while avoiding unnecessary surgeries, injections, and pain medications. Before I cover all the treatments with you, I wanna make sure I give you some guidance on how to approach these. You wanna make sure to do some trial and error with these. It may not work the first time for you. You might need to try them a few times, and sometimes, most often than not, you've gotta try a combination of things to get the effect that you're looking for. Watch out for bad reactions or increased pain in your knee. That's not a good thing. The whole no pain, no gain mentality does not apply to these things. It should feel good once you start doing the right thing. Keep in mind that how you hurt your knee and how long it's been hurt will influence the effectiveness of these treatments and home remedies. If you try all of these things on the list, and you're not getting the results you're looking for, your knee is still bothering you, then I strongly urge you to contact a specialist. Get professional help for your knee problem so that you can avoid an unnecessary surgery, injections, or pain medications. If you hurt your knee recently and it's just not getting better, over time you might walk different or just not move the same, and oftentimes this could affect other joints nearby like the hip, the foot, or make your other leg worse. So it's important that you get this problem resolved as quick as possible. Now let's get into the 19 best treatments at home and home remedies that you can try. Number one, ice. Common classic treatment. There's tons of different ways to do it. You can go get a, a bag at the store that's special, specially designed to hold ice, or you could just get a Ziploc bag and fill it with some ice cubes from your freezer and put that on your knee. Now the proper way to do this is to put it on for about 15 to 20 minutes, generally enough time for the skin under over your knee under the ice to go numb. Then take it off for about 15 to 20 minutes and put it back on again for another 15 to 20 minutes. Then take it off and, and give it some time. And you cycle like this for two hours. That's generally the right dosage to get the effect that you're looking for. It is not a good idea to just keep ice on there for an indefinite amount of time. You can actually get burns from ice. Um, your skin can get affected. So just check your skin periodically and make sure that you're using common sense. Do not hurt your skin when icing. Number two, heat. Follow the same steps that I outlined with ice. 15 minutes on, 15 minutes off. Repeat that for two hours with heat. There's all kinds of different products out there to heat it up, um, to heat up your knee. You can get heating pads, electric heating pads, microwavable heating pads, uh, water, the, the bottles that you fill with hot water, those work really well as well. You can try whatever you want, but putting heat over your knee, for some people, that's more effective than ice. There is a way to combine the two where you put heat on and then ice on. You can start with the other, it doesn't matter. Um, you've got to figure out what works best for you. I can tell you from the scientific research that the, the effectiveness of ice versus heat is mixed. They're even throwing up the old adage. They used to think that if you just hurt your, yourself, that ice is the best thing. They're, they're questioning that right now. So what I urge you to do is find what helps you the best. Like I said earlier, once you do the right thing for yourself, you should feel like you get some relief immediately. Number three. Over-the-counter pain medications might be something that you've already tried and can be helpful. Now there's all different types of brands and, and types of medications out there. Some of the common ones are Tylenol, Ibuprofen, and Naproxen. Um, just make sure you check with your physician to, to know that this is safe for you. Long-term use of these medications can be harmful. Oftentimes it is in a lot of people. So make sure you have a plan to get off these pain medications very soon. Um, we know for sure that ibuprofen, if you're using it around the clock for weeks, it can tear holes in your stomach and cause internal bleeding. So it's okay to use for a few days, maybe a week at most. You gotta read the label and check with your doctor, of course. Um, but please avoid using medications for longer than just a few days. 
That way you can be safe in your organs and, and not depending on them for the long term. Related to pain medications, number four, pain patches. There's all types of over-the-counter patches that you can buy out there that stick to your knee. You can They come in a package. Salon Paws is a very common one. Um, other, other brands have their own version of it. Icy Hot has their, their version of it. I think Ben Gay makes one too. And uh, what you do is you, you unwrap it and you stick it onto your knee and you're supposed to be able to wear it for an extended period of time and it slowly releases the medication into your skin and it passes into your knee. The idea with this is to get some relief so that you can be able to walk around and move around and these can be effective for some, for some short-term pain relief. Number five are pain creams. So actual gels or creams or lotions that you that have infused medication into them, uh, stuff like Bengay, uh, Icy Hot, uh, Tiger Balm, Asper Cream, there's a ton of different options out there. You could rub that onto your knee and get some short-term relief as well. Number six, Epsom salt baths. Epsom salt comes in a, in a container, usually kind of the shape of a, of a milk carton. There's different, uh, some come in bags as well. There's different uh, brands out there. You can usually find this at a corner store like a, like a Walgreens or CVS, at the grocery stores as well. And uh, what you do is you draw a bath, you, you turn on the, the, the water in your bathtub, you know, get it to the right temperature that's best for you and you put in the Epsom salt, read the instructions on the back of the cartridge or, or package to know exactly how much to put in, and then you soak in the Epsom salt bath. Some people get relief from this. Number seven, oils. A big trend lately has been essential oils. There's all kinds of different essential oils out there and uh, different concoctions, combinations that people make with them. Um, I can't speak on the research on this specifically, but I have had clients come in and tell me that they benefit from using certain essential oils. So if that's something that you're knowledgeable about or you know somebody who is, consult with them and see if that's an option to help your knee problem. Related to this is CBD oil, which is a derivative of marijuana. It's the part that's safe and isn't, isn't going to have any mind-altering effects. It's the pain-relieving part. Um, we've had some clients use that as well, and some people report some decent relief with CBD oil. Number eight, homeopathic concoctions is what I call it. Um, people report to me all the time, people come in for knee problems, that they've made their mix of apple cider vinegar, turmeric, um, ginger, and all kinds of other herbs and different things they, that they can consume, and that that helps them with their knee problem. I think generally this is safe as long as you know what's, what you're putting into your concoction, your cocktail to mix, um, and make sure that it's, not, that it's not giving you any sort of stomach problems or other adverse effects, um, but some people report having a good outcome in relieving their knee problem with this. Number nine, diet. Managing your weight and changing your diet. Now, uh, some people feel like they need to lose some weight to help out their knee problem, and that might be the case. So it's, I think it's always a good thing to double check your diet and take out the foods that aren't the healthiest and put more foods in there that are healthy. Um, that way you're overall healthy, not just as far as weight, um, but as far as your blood values and your, your tissues as well. Um, another aspect of this is anti-inflammatory foods. So there's certain foods out there that are inflammatory. Um, some known ones are sugars, uh, like you would eat you know, candy, uh, table sugar, other things have sugar in them without you even knowing it. High fructose corn syrup is, is a, a type of sugar out there. Lactose, which is found in milk, is a type of sugar as well. Um, so some people make big efforts to reduce their sugar intake so that they're not causing inflammation in their joints. And I've seen some people have some good outcomes with that as well. Number 10, supplements. There's tons of supplements out there. If you go to any drug store or vitamin store, you'll find lots and lots of joint and pain relieving supplements. Um, the most common joint supplements that I hear about and get asked about all the time are glucosamine and chondroitin. To my knowledge, I've looked at the research on this, it's not harmful, harmful for you, so if you want to begin to try that out, I'd say go for it. Follow the instructions on the bottle and you can try taking glucosamine and chondroitin tablets. Uh, I think it comes in liquid form as well. There's, there's all kinds of varieties of, of how you can consume it. Um, but it's mixed results in the research. Some people in the research report that it helps their joints. 
and others no different. The cool thing is I haven't seen anything that says that it's harmful. I haven't seen anybody have any adverse reactions, but I'm not gonna put it past you. If, if you find that it irritates you somehow, your stomach or it makes some other, gives you some other reaction, of course, stop taking it. And that goes for all supplements. Um, check with your doctor, if you're, especially if you're taking other medications, you need to always check with your doctor that puts you on those medications to see if any supplements you're taking aren't gonna have some bad effects when they're combined with your medications. Number 11, self-massage or massage using a machine. So you can put your hands on your thigh muscles and on your calf muscles and massage your leg. And I found clients have tremendous relief from this. I think this is very easy to do. It doesn't cost you a thing. Um, some people like to go out there and purchase a machine that vibrates or, or moves a certain way to massage your muscles around your leg. And I think that's cool as well. If you find that you get benefit from that, you can do that as much as you like, as long as you're not bruising yourself or, or irritating your knee. Now with massage, just be careful. You don't want to be massaging your actual joints, you know, right where your kneecap is and everything. You generally want to stay where the muscles are at. If you've got a knee problem, oftentimes the quad muscles, the calf muscles, the hamstring muscles will get stiff. They might even spasm at times and massaging them can be very beneficial for your knee joint. Number 12, stretches. There's all types of stretches out there. If you Google knee pain stretches, you'll find tons of options, tons of videos as well. You can try a variety of stretches, try a combination. My advice to you is find two to three stretches that you can do on a consistent basis. So I'd look to do them at least three times a day and do them for several days, go up to a week. And if that benefits your knee, that might be how you get some massive pain relief. Related to that is number 13, exercises. If you Google knee pain exercises or talk to a doctor or specialist about it as well, if you wanna get some more specific guidance, you can find tons of exercises out there that are helpful in relieving your knee problem. Um, just be careful with trying them out. Of course, like I said earlier, they should not hurt your knee. If you've got a knee problem, the no pain, no gain mentality does not apply to knee pain problems. So any exercise that you choose to do for your knee problem, it should not aggravate your knee during the exercise or immediately afterwards or even into the next day. You should feel some relief from doing the exercise. Sometimes it's a matter of modifying the exercise as well, do an easier version of it, um, or find a, a way to offload your legs so that you're not bearing weight if it's a standing exercise or one that involves weights. So just be careful with exercise out there. There's a lot of different types out there. You gotta pick the one that's safest for you. Number 14, sleeves and braces. You know, the type that you can go to the, uh, you know, Academy or even Walmart, um, there are sleeves that you slide on to your, over your foot and ankle and up to your knee. Usually they've got a hole for your kneecap. Those can give you some compression. Sometimes they're infused with certain things like copper and magnets. Um, those knee braces, I see people come in with them all the time. They tend to be pretty helpful for them. They can give them some compression. Um, there's braces out there that have brackets in them as well. The ones that have metal struts on the sides of, of the knee. Um, there's some, there's all kinds of varieties. There's some that are just one sided with the bracket. Uh, you, you can, you can get lost in the store with all the different types of knee braces out there. Generally, knee braces are pretty effective at reducing pain but they don't solve the long-term problem. So you've got to consider that. If, if you have had a long-standing knee problem, you might wanna to talk to a specialist about that. But if you just hurt your knee, getting a knee brace is not a bad idea at all. When you wear that knee brace, so just be careful to, to go and wash it every now and then. I'd say wash it daily even because it can get stinky, especially if it's hot outside. Number 15, wraps. You know, those long wraps, they're stretchy. You can wrap your leg those don't allow for much motion though, so if you wrap it real tight, you won't be able to bend your knee very much. You can wrap it in such a way that you, your knee can bend, um, but generally the way I've seen people use those is they'll use it in combination with the, the creams that you put on, like Bengay, um, Asper Cream, the other stuff, or they'll make their own concoction of a, of a cream. Vicks is another thing that people rub on themselves. Um, and then they'll wrap it to, to get a compressive effect along with the cream. Um, and I've seen people have some pretty good relief from that. And you know, as far as getting relief, I love that people do these things because they might be skipping out on using medications, which can tear up your gut, and I'm all for that. They might be 
delaying getting an injection or having a surgery, that's definitely worthwhile. So whenever people come into the clinic and tell me all the crazy things that, that they've used, I applaud them and tell them, good job, you're avoiding doing something that's potentially harmful for your internal organs, your kidneys, your liver, all that. So try out the wrap, try out the, the creams that you can rub on yourself. Make sure that you find a way to get that knee pain down. Number 16, knee straps. There's straps, they're, they're thin straps that wrap around your knee. Um, they're often called jumper's knee straps. These can be effective for reducing pain and still being active. The idea with these is, is that they're very minimal. They're not like a big giant sleeve or brace that slides on. So you can still be pretty active. I've used these myself in the past and I found that they can reduce pain, but they don't solve the long-term problem. They did reduce pain for me in the short term, but I still had to go do some other stuff to make sure that my knee problem went away completely. Number 17, electrical stimulation. Um, sometimes it's also called TENS, T-E-N-S. This is often provided for patients in physical therapy clinics and chiropractic clinics as well, but there are units that you can purchase at the store for your own use. They're machines that are often battery operated or you can plug them into the wall outlet and they've got wires that attach to some sticky pads, electrodes, that you can stick onto your skin and then you turn the knobs on the machine to get the small electrical signals going through the pads on your skin. If you turn it up high enough, it can make your muscles work quite a bit. And um, there, follow the instructions on, on the, the packaging that comes with your machine if you decided to buy one of these. They're pretty cool. I think that they can definitely relieve knee pain, um, but they don't solve the long-term problem. So just be careful with thinking that that's going to fix your knee pain for the long term if you've got a chronic one. Now, if you just hurt your knee recently, it might make the world of a difference and prevent you from going to the doctor or having to get extra help. So I'm all for it. If you want to try it out at home, give it a shot. Number 18, getting new shoes. Some people have had the same shoes for six months, 12 months, more than a year, and their soles are so worn down, the cushioning is gone. And when they go buy brand new shoes, their knee pain magically gets better. For some people that can make the world of a difference. Now there's all types of support within the sole of shoes out there. Um, people use the words out there, pronation and supination. That just means the way that your foot is tilting, which influences the position of your knee joint up higher. So you've got to make sure that you get, you got the right support. Usually if you find a pair of shoes that's worked for you in the past, I would put those shoes on when you go shoe shopping and look at the soles and compare them. And as long as they're pretty similar, especially if they're the same brand of shoe, they likely will have the same sole. It seems like shoe companies kind of use the same insides of the shoe, they just change the outsides. If they've got the same sole, then those are probably gonna be good shoes for you to purchase to, to get some relief for your knee problem. And number 19, if you've got shoes that are not going to be comfortable you say you've got a job where you've got to wear dress shoes or or you just don't like wearing tennis shoes and and you you like shoes that don't have as much support because that's your preference that's cool i encourage you to go get some insoles they're the the things that you could buy at a shoe store or there's specialized stores for this as well where you slip it into your shoe and it has a little arch support or a heel cuff that positions your heel Sometimes it'll have special padding around the, the front of the foot or the toes. These heel support, these insoles can make a world of a difference for your knee problem. So there you go, guys. I covered all 19 best at-home knee treatments and home remedies that you can try out. Like I said at the beginning, you might need to try a combination of these. You might need to do some trial and error, but it's definitely worthwhile so that you can figure out what works best for you so that you can stay active, healthy, and mobile, and avoid having to take medications for the long term, avoid having a knee injection, and of course, avoid having a knee operation sometime in the future. I hope that you can sleep better tonight. I hope that you can walk better later today. And most importantly, I hope that you fully recover from your knee problem. Now, if you just hurt your knee within the past few weeks, all of these options are great options for you to try out, and you should theoretically be able to fully recover from your knee problem. But if your knee problem has been going on for months, years, maybe even decades, these options that I just covered, these 19 options, are probably only going to get you so far. I would not look for any of these options to fully resolve your knee problem. You likely are going to need some specialist help 
to make sure that you get all the way back to normal. The good news is in about nine out of 10 severe knee problems, at least that we see here in the clinic, they don't need surgery. And if they're already getting injections or taking medications around the clock, they usually get completely off medications and get active again. They're going up and down stairs, they're running, they're doing exercises. We get them back to normal. So if that's you, I, I urge you to check out our website to learn more about how you can get help for your knee problem. You can find our website at epmanualphysicaltherapy.com. I hope you have the best day. Bye-bye.